Hi everyone, welcome to Zenith Workouts. I'm Rebecca Livy, and today we're doing a, a very basic or introductory level uh, mat class where we're going to put a, a bit of emphasis on our uh, like getting uh, alignment, getting movement, but also having strength in the neck and upper back and uh, like a bit into the shoulder, more shoulder blade area. So, um, but we'll, we'll do a bit of whole body as well. And the only prop that you'll need or want to have is a towel. Um, I have a rolled up hand towel. It is, it's literally hand towel size. Um, if you have, um, if you have a lot of roundness in your upper back, a lot of head forward posture, uh, a deep inward curve at the neck, then you may, you, you know, you may need a larger towel because you're you're going to try to put it later between between your neck and the mat, and you you want to you want to fill that space, I guess. So uh, you might need to play around with finding something that's the right size, but and you won't need that right away. So here we go. Uh, let's stand uh, as we often start with our feet in parallel. And just finding, looking down at your feet, I like to look, especially if you're new to uh, this sort of movement or these classes, just to see how your feet line up. You know, maybe you think they're in parallel and they're not quite, or one's a little forward than the other. So see if you can get that nice alignment. And if you naturally turn out a little bit at the hips and that's more comfortable, you can be there. It's really, it's really just to find a nice, natural, relaxed posture. See if you can relax your toes. If you could spread them, uh, you know, not have grippy little little toes, and sometimes that just takes takes some thought as well. And then see if you can, you know, put some weight into your right leg, and notice how that feels in your body. Put shift that weight and put a little weight in your left, and see how see how your body responds. And go go again to each side. And this is just to pay attention to your feet, and up the chain but really just to, to say, does it feel even? What feels different? Just to notice, right? And then settle into a spot where you have even weight right to left. Have a little softness in your knees if you tend to lock them and hyperextend. And then let's just verify our neutral pelvis. So if you, if you wanna put the heels of your hands on your hip pointers and fingers uh, down on the pubic bone, you don't need to live in your neutral pelvis all the time. We're just, we're trying to find a place where you're as close to that as you're comfortable though. And you're neutral when your, your hip pointers and your pubic bone are, are falling in a horizontal line, or a vertical line, sorry. So if I, I'm here, I'm fairly neutral. Um, if I exaggerate with an anterior tip of the pelvis, it's called, and I stick my tailbone out behind me or I stick my bum out and have a little more sway in my low back, then my hip pointers are living forward of my, my pubic bone at that point. So that's not my neutral. And you can do this just, just to warm up and feel, your, feel where you are. And if I tuck my tailbone, if I over tuck, I'll, you know, I'll have the appearance of having a very flat bum and flat back and the, now my pubic bone is a little forward of the, the hip pointers. So, uh, you know, take a little moment and rock between those sort of extremes of position with the pelvis, and then settle into a spot where you feel you're as close to that vertical alignment of those landmarks as possible. But if it gives you pain to be there, you don't have to live there, it's just that you're trying to consciously be as close to that position as possible. And then imagine drawing up tall. And I'll also, I'll often say through the front of the spine. And that's just because if we think sometimes of drawing up tall through the back, we, we get a bit of a military posture. And that's not really what you're looking for either. You'd like the, the rib cage to live over the pelvis, like that weight. So that's why, that's why the visualization of the front of the spine getting longer, if that works for you. And then see that the head falls over all of those other things and that's that's often we think we are like have someone take a photo of you or uh, like a side selfie in the mirror or something because often we're we're here and we think we're in a great alignment so you know it might take some some work to get that head back over the rest of the body and it might not feel very natural at first so and we're going to warm up with our head as this is a neck focused video 
So uh, just feel taller to start with. And we're going to nod the chin. And that's all we're going to do. So imagine the back of your head staying. You know, if you had your back up against a wall behind you, the back of the head is staying still. And the chin is nodding down towards the throat, not the whole head coming forward. So it's a little nod and back to looking straight ahead. A little nod and back to looking straight ahead. And it's very subtle. I'm, I try to make it a, a bit of a big movement, especially in a, a video like this where you can, you know, hopefully see the movement. But it's going to feel very tiny to you. And the gaze of the eyes, you know, is straight ahead and a little bit down. Straight ahead and just a little bit down. You shouldn't see your toes, that's too far. <laughs> and the idea with this is a little bit of activation of what we call our deep neck flexors. And they're a group of small muscles at the front of the neck that stabilize, help to support the neck. And also it lengthens the back of the neck, this movement, especially the suboccipital area or the base of the head. Let's just do one more like this. And come back to looking straight ahead. Keep that gaze looking straight ahead and imagine that your nose is a little pivot point. And this one's hard as well, you might need a mirror. Uh, taking, taking the right ear towards the right shoulder, but also letting the chin move to the left so that it's not this big side bend towards the shoulder. It is, you know, the nose stays still and it's like you're moving the head as a clock <laughs> side to side. And this is, again, it's upper neck. We're starting at the top. So it's, you know, you really might feel it, you know, right below your ears or right below your jaw. It's not unusual that it's very different side to side, especially if you are somebody who tends to talk, you know, and have the head a little bit in a side bent position. You'll have a favorite side and it will be, it'll be significantly different. So let's try to do just another couple side to side. And if it feels a little tight, you're not forcing it into something that feels uncomfortable, but you're noting it and hopefully improving it with time. Very good. Come to just a nice vertical uh, alignment again. And we'll do some rotation. And rotation happens at the upper neck fairly naturally. So uh, we'll do full rotation to look over the shoulder and to come back to the center. And a full rotation the other way and to come back to the center. And what I'd like you to do, as in other videos, is as you rotate, you're really trying to keep you know, the center of the forehead, the nose and the chin in a nice vertical line. Because if we aren't moving at the upper neck or we have some stiffness down the neck, it could be that we lead with the chin <laughs> or we lead with the forehead. And what you'd really like to do is have all of those joints participating in the movement. So think of getting taller as you do your rotation and think of trying to keep that nice vertical line. Good. Let's do the last one to the left. And then we'll go into more movement forward with the head. So a little nod of the chin to start with like we, the first movement we warmed up with, and then I'll keep that little chin tuck, but now allow the whole head to roll forward, to look down at your toes, and to feel a length or a stretch, you know, maybe right down into between your shoulder blades, depending if you're tight at all. And then I want you to imagine that you're restacking one bone of the neck at a time, and the last thing to untuck will be that chin to look straight ahead. And we'll do a couple more like that. Breath in to get tall, out breath, tuck the chin, roll it forward. Pause for a second there and imagine that the, the crown of your head is getting longer. It's reaching ahead of you so that you're, you're lengthened as well as rounded. And then restack on the exhale. And one more just like that. Inhale to get tall. Exhale to nod the chin and roll it forward. Breath in. 
and then restacking. Gorgeous, perfect. Nice breath in to pick up the shoulders, to glide those shoulders up towards your ears, and then to relax them down, reach those fingertips towards the feet. Pick up the shoulders again. And relax down, reach those fingers towards your feet. And here you're looking for those shoulder blades to glide straight up and not have the chin poke forward or a lot of tension develop in the, you know, the throat or jaw. Yes, you're gonna be using some neck muscles and getting some, some activity there, but you want that nice tall alignment. Yeah, good. And then we'll start to add some arm movement here. So pick up the shoulder blades, the shoulders, glide them up, glide them up, glide them up a little higher, and then press them down. Keep the idea of those shoulders being down as the arms reach directly out to the side. Perfect, I want you to rotate so both palms are all the way up, as far as they can go. And in that position, I'd like you to press the arms back just a little bit behind you, so you're nice and open across the chest. Good. Bring it back so the arms are directly out from the shoulders and rotate the palms all the way down, back, maybe even up a little bit, but they stay right out from the shoulders. They're not sneaking forward. Good. And then reach, you know, the right fingertips that way, the left fingertips that way, <laughs> and press the arms behind you again. Oh, that feels funny, right? Good. One more time each way. Turn the palms all the way up. Good, and then press the arms behind you. So this is like shoulder and opening across the chest, eh? But also with the idea of keeping a nice long spine, a nice long neck. Bring the arms right out to the sides, rotate so the palms go down, they go back behind you. Maybe they even turn up a little bit, depending how flexible you are in your shoulders. You don't want to really get you know, the shoulders rolled forward like that. Uh, and then press press the arms behind you and just feel like, yeah, that, that could feel strange. And it could be different one side than the other and the hope is you even it out. Good. Relax down for a second. Do a little shake out if you need there. Good. And then we're gonna do a little bit of that rotation and we're gonna add it into some rib cage movement. And to do that, you're gonna take a little bit of a wider stance and go into a bit of a squat. So if you like to turn your feet out a little bit, you don't have to be very deep or very wide here, it's just to get a little bit of a wide base because we're gonna, we're gonna shift in the upper body. For the beginning though, the pelvis is centered between the feet, even weight on each foot. You're nice and tall in your spine. Pick those shoulder blades up. And then on your out breath, slide them down your back so you're nice and long in the neck and you're floating the arms up to be right out from the shoulders. And then we're gonna turn the right palm up all the way as the left palm turns all the way down. And then as you do that, you're going to reach out. You're going to reach out, you're going to reach out, you're going to reach out to that right side and pull it back to the middle. And you're going to rotate the other way. So left palm is turning all the way up, right palm is turning all the way down. And you're going to reach it out the other way. Doesn't that feel good? And if you get into the rhythm here, you can go a little bit faster so that you're shifting your weight from your waist up towards the arm that is, has the palm turned up. And if you reverse it by accident, like that would not be the end of the world. We're just doing some nice stretching and fascial work here, and this is taking advantage of a certain certain stretching way, but uh, you, you know, can be creative. <laughs> so right palm up, shift to the right, left palm up, shift to the left, Let's do one more nice one each side, because doesn't this feel good? Beautiful. Perfect. Pause. You're centered. The arms are out to the side. You're going to float the arms up and overhead. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms towards the ceiling if that feels good, or you can grab a wrist if the, if the hands don't like to do that. And you're just going to keep the elbows straight if you can. Slide the shoulders down away from the ears, and then you're gonna sink a little deeper into your squat. Inhaling to sink deeper, exhaling to press up a little bit. 
And just this nice pulse in the legs so that you feel a little bit in the hips while you're imagining getting some length in your side body. Hold this one down and then just do a nice side bend to your left, thinking of getting taller rather than really collapsing into it. Come up through the center, lengthen beautifully to your right and one more to each side, to the left, lovely, and to the right. Perfect. Sink a little deeper into your squat and then press it all up. Float the arms down nice and deliberate. A little shake of the shoulders again. You can walk the feet in. We're gonna do one more nice uh, sort of stretch exercise in standing. And this is just uh, with the arm and the whole, it's a bit of balance with our side and lengthen our side body. Uh, if balance is very hard or you wanna focus just on the upper body, you can leave the feet just in parallel. Or if you'd like a little more out of it, then uh, placing uh, the weight in your left leg and take the right leg and cross it over in front. Right? And really keep your weight grounded in that right foot, especially the outer border, because we're gonna, we're gonna lengthen that way. You can have the little softness in the knees. This is some balance, right? And we're gonna take the right arm and you're gonna put it behind your back. You're gonna slide it behind your back. Maybe, you know, maybe you only get here if you're a little tight in the shoulder. Maybe you can take that paw or that hand so it's right, you know, directly centered. Maybe you can even bring it over a little bit further. Maybe you're flexible and it shows up on the other side. <laughs> Whatever works for you so that you feel a bit of opening through the front of the shoulder. And the head and neck are in line with the rest of the spine. You're gonna take a nice breath in, you're gonna get taller. And then you're gonna tip the left ear down towards the left shoulder. But you're gonna keep your face forward, you're gonna keep your chest forward, you're gonna keep the hips forward. So there's no rotation. So you're here. And then you're gonna take the left hand. Maybe this feels like a great stretch and you just wanna stay there. If you want a little more, then take the left arm and bring it overhead and hold the right side of your head. So you're here. Nice breath in. And you're going to play a little push a war, maybe, instead of tug of war, where you're going to press the head into your hand as if you're bringing the head up to the center, but you're not going to let it move. The hand is going to block you. And it's just a gentle movement. It's just, it's not like an intense push. It's just a little bit of pressure of the head into the hand. And then relax and see if you can lengthen into it a little more where you bring that left ear towards your shoulder a little bit more, not by pulling with the hand, but just guiding and always thinking about length. And we'll do that again. Press the head into the hand and relax and ease into the stretch a little bit. Beautiful. Good. From there, you can turn the head to look down towards the left shoulder. Come back to the side. And then hold the head in that side bending. Take the left hand, reach it down towards the hip, and bring the right arm from behind and reach it overhead. So you've got this nice side bend from the leg up through the side of the body to the fingertips. And you have your beautiful side bend at your head and neck. Nice breath in there, release it. Uncross the leg if you opted for that version, and we'll do the same thing on the other side, and that's your, in that order. So, weight into your right leg, take the left leg, cross it over top, cross it in front of me. Hips stay facing forward, you're a little soft in your knees if you need to be, and then left arm is gonna come behind your back, and just where you can feel nice and open across the shoulder, just a little bit, you know, a little bit of a stretch gentle pull in, the, in the, the front of the shoulder or the chest. And then take the right arm, or actually let's bend, side bend first. So tipping that right ear towards the right shoulder, but with the face still looking forward. And then right arm comes up, overhead, to place above your left ear, sort of, on the side of your head. Nice breath in, and then press into that hand. 
and you'll feel some activity in the muscles of the side of the neck. And then relax and see if you can side bend a little more. And you don't have to add the arm part in. If you do, great. And if not, just hold a nice length and stretch. Press into the hand one more time. Relax. Come into that side bend a little more. And then add a bit of rotation, only if it feels good. At any point, if your neck says stop, then you stop. Looking down at the shoulder. Coming back to look ahead. Release the right arm, reach it down towards your feet or down towards the knee, whatever you're thinking there. And then take the right arm from behind, reach it overhead, or sorry, left arm from behind, reach it overhead. And you're in this nice side bend where you're grounded through the left foot and hopefully you feel a nice length right up through that left side of the body to the fingertips. Nice breath while you're there. Exhale to bring it all back to the center and release. Perfect. From there, we're going to come down onto our mat, and we're going to start with our. Uh, we're going to start on hands and knees. Click. So, getting the hands positioned right underneath the shoulder, so shoulder width apart, and you know, if you're too far back, you'll have a little strain on the wrist. It'll be too sharp of an angle. Um, and if also if you're too far forward, you'll be working quite hard in the shoulders or in the, in the front body. So get in a place where you're as comfortable as you can be with the fingers spread, the thumbs away from the rest of the hands, a nice foundation there. And that will make things happier in the shoulders already and the upper body. Um, if you need to, you can modify by rolling the mat and having a little more padding under the hands. You know? Or um, if you need to be on the knuckles, that's an option too. It's just a little bit hard through the knuckles and often hard to organize the shoulders, but you do what you need to do with what life has dealt your body. <laughs> Good, and we're gonna start with a little bit of shoulder blade movement. So um, find a place where the head and neck are in line with the rest of the spine. So you shouldn't see your knees. That's definitely not in, in line, but also sometimes we tend to look up too much, especially if you're looking at your computer screen or your TV screen. <laughs> but you know, you don't want a big kink in the neck that way either. So just make, you know, yourself feel long in the neck and looking down at those fingertips. And the movement is no change in the curve of your spine, but as you breathe in, pressing the, the chest away from the mat by, by widening the shoulder blades, pressing through the hands, pressing the breastbone away from the mat. And as you breathe out, letting the chest move towards the mat by drawing those shoulder blades in and towards your spine. So press away and sink towards the mat. So shoulder blades get wide and shoulder blades move in towards the spine. And if you're having a hard time getting this, continue if you're doing well. But if you're having a hard time with that movement, you can practice without putting weight on the hands at first, having the hands out in front and reaching forward and drawing back without bending the elbows. And this is the same movement in the shoulder blades that you're looking for. And you're looking to keep the head and the neck nice and still and the whole spine nice and straight. It's not a rounding of the spine as you press away. So let's just do two more, maybe three more. It's a good movement. And you'll feel it's not you know, extreme work through the shoulders, but it's a lot of little muscles coordinating this movement working on the stability of the shoulder blades on the chest wall, the, the thoracic wall. One more nice one. Good, and then pause halfway, not halfway, three quarters of the way, pressed up. Lovely. Take a nice breath in, and you're gonna start to tuck your chin and let the head roll forward as you breathe out. So a little chin tuck, so you're looking slightly back, and then you're letting the head roll forward, and looking back at the thighs. Then let your upper back round, so press more away from the mat, let the mid back round up, and then finally the low back and pelvis join in, so you're in this beautiful cat stretch. Breathe in there, and then release in reverse. So release the pelvis, release, the mid back back to flat, the upper back, and the head is still tucked here. 
and then finally the head and neck come back up. So let's do that again. Nice breath in, out breath to nod the chin. Don't move anything except that head and neck at first. Right. Get that length in the back of the neck and right down between the shoulder blades as the upper back rounds up. Then mid back, then low back, then pelvis. And here it's like you're trying to touch your forehead to your, to your thighs. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's your thought. <laughs> Release the low back, mid back, upper back, head and neck come up. And we'll do that one more time. Nod the chin. Look back at the thighs, let the upper back round, and you're trying to stay broad in your front. So wide shoulders, wide collarbones here. Nice. Nice breath in here, and then keep this rounded arch position as you gently rock the hips back towards the heels. Good. Just to give the wrists a little break, to get a little length and stretch in the shoulders. Just breathe in and notice where you feel that. Perfect. And then come back to forward. We're doing one more exercise on hands and knees. And this is some rotation for our our, um, our neck and upper back together. So the you can it's easier with wider knees if you're really feeling a little bit uh, unsteady on the mat or leave the knees where they are if you're confident. Press into your left hand only and bring the right hand to the forehead. I like that because it keeps, helps to keep your head in line with the rest of the spine. And as you breathe in, you're going to turn to look at your elbow and you're going to let that elbow rise up towards the ceiling, and this is nice movement through the neck, through the upper back, even into the mid back, and then release it back down. And we're going to do another one like that, looking to the elbow, letting the elbow reach towards the ceiling, and it's just what you can control, and back down. Good. On this last one, see if you're letting the chin poke forward, or, more correct, tuck the chin, rotate, and keep that idea of a little chin tuck as you get in the full position. Good, and then release that arm. We'll do the other side. And that's work, eh? That's a lot of work through the shoulder that's supporting you. And work through your core as you hold the hips nice and still. So left hand to the forehead. On your out breath, turn to look at that elbow. Nice rotation. Come back down. Make sure the head stays in line with the spine and doesn't sneak forward. You're pressing the chest away from your, the mat. You're strong in the arm that's supporting you. And this is a lot of work. This is one of the hardest things we'll do in this video. So don't feel discouraged if you're saying, oh, my arm that's supporting me. <laughs> it's hard, but it's good strengthening for the shoulder blades. And because you're forward and rotating, you're getting some strengthening in the back of the neck. That was three. Make that one your last one. Rock it back if you need to for your wrists, just for a second. Come forward. And we're just going to do three repetitions of our hover. So our hover is, if possible, if your toes are stiff, you can leave your toes as they are. Or if you're able to, tuck the toes so that you're, you're bearing weight through them. Take a nice breath in, and before you lift your knees, you're going to lift your knees, I want you to think of stabilizing by drawing in the belly, lifting the pelvic floor, but also pressing the chest away from the mat and really being aware of the head. This is a head and neck video. So as you hover the knees, right? Don't let the head sneak forward, right? We're looking, being interested in how high your knees are, right? And then release the knees. Breathe in, and we'll do it again. So pelvic floor lift, deep belly draws in, shoulders are broad, shoulders are down away from your ears, the neck is long, you hover the knees, nothing else moves. And that's hard, right? You've got to have a challenge even at the basic level, right? Release. And one more. Exhale. Stabilize. Keep the head and neck in line, the shoulders broad, and the shoulders away from the ears. The elbows are a little soft. If you tend to hyperextend, 
messes with your shoulder stability. <laughs> Good, release the knees, uncurl the toes, and let's come down to be on our bellies on the mat. With the forehead under the, uh, under the, um, the hands under the forehead. <laughs> Sorry. Good. We're going to keep the, uh, the feet close together if possible. Remembering from if you did the tutorial of how to be on your belly, you can always get the, the legs a little wider to start with if you're really having discomfort. Or you can put that book or cushion under the hips. Take a breath in. Draw in with the deep belly as you breathe out. Try to imagine pulling the tummy away from the mat. And keep the pelvis nice and still as you float the right leg. Release it down. And switch sides. Exhaling to draw the tummy in and float the left leg. And of course, the essence of this exercise, I shouldn't say of course, but the essence of this exercise is that the pelvis stays nice and still and the low back stays still as well and the movement comes from the hip which is hard to do, that's a lot to think about. Um, you can self-check by putting the fingertips underneath the, the um, bony hip pointers, and you shouldn't feel a change in pressure. You shouldn't feel that hip pointer driving harder into the mat as you lift the leg. And that is, that takes some time, certainly, to, uh, you know, to get that movement pattern if it's something that's already sort of built into your body to do differently. Um, with the head and neck, though, while you work on the legs, ask yourself if the shoulders could be a little bit more away from the ears. Can the collarbones be a little wider? Could the elbows be wider? And could you feel longer in the neck? You know, just to while you, while you work on the legs, be relaxed in that upper body. Good. One more lift with the right leg. And then the left. Nice. Take a breath in. And this time as you exhale, you draw in with the belly, all the same. But then you're going to float up with the face and the throat and a little bit of the breastbone. And I really just want you to think of getting tall and looking, you know, where's your gaze? If it's too far down, you're going to be all bent at the head if you're looking down at your own chest. Or if you're too far looking up, you're going to be all kinked in the neck. Right? So. It's definitely a thought of peeling up one bone of the back at a time. So forehead, bridge of the nose, nose, mouth, chin, throat, right? But not overdoing that extension and peel it back down. Exhale to come up. Lovely. And to come down. Good. So this is your option one. You can, you can do this. Or a harder version, just float the face, take the arms from where they are and reach them down towards your hips, your toes even. Good. And here we're going to take the shoulder blades and we're going to just drop back away from the mat a little bit. We're going to turn the palms to be facing into the thighs, so the thumbs are down towards the mat. And we're going to lift a little more here. So lift the face, lift the throat. Lift a little bit of the breastbone and reach those fingers down, down, down towards your feet. You don't have to come up high. Lower it down. Let the shoulder blades sort of flop forward and relax. And do that all again. Draw the shoulder blades back and together, just lightly. More think of drawing them up towards the ceiling. Turn the palms in and the whole arm is floating. Whole arms are floating. And then draw in with the belly and lift up with the face and the throat and the breastbone and reach the fingertips down towards the feet. Release it all down and let the shoulders round forward. And this is a lot harder than what we were doing with the head resting on the forearms or head resting on the hands. So do what version feels good in your body but also realize you want to challenge yourself because this is a nice postural exercise. Let's do one more of each or whatever version you're doing. If you're doing the shoulder blades one, it's draw the shoulder blades back in together. Turn the palms to face your thighs. 
Reach the fingertips towards the toes as you lift up with the face and the throat and the breastbone, but you keep the gaze down and you're drawn in in the tummy so that you're well supported in that low back. And then release it down if you had the hands behind you or under the forehead. Take them underneath the uh, shoulders or rib cage now, bend the knees. And on your exhale, press up and rock it back into a well-deserved shell stretch or child's pose. So get the, the sit bones back towards the heels, lower the forehead to the mat. You can keep the support of the hands there if you need, or you can rock, um, you can move the hands around by the feet. And just there, let the shoulder blades be wide and relaxed where you just worked in that upper back. If the head isn't comfortable like this, then don't hesitate to put the hands underneath the forehead. Right, depending, all depends on our the flexibility, mobility of our body and spine already, old injuries, all that stuff. We'll take two nice breaths here. And then on your next breath, if you need to help with your hands, you can, or without, roll it up to nice kneeling and come around to be on your back. This is where you'll need your towel. And you don't need it right away. Good. So take a, take a moment and just feel uh, your neutral pelvis. So you've got a little space behind your low back in the mat likely. Yeah. The feet are sit bone width apart, the knees are over, or, are just as wide as the feet. And see if you can feel the weight of your head on the mat and then make it a little bit heavier. Actively, actively press the head back into the mat a little bit and then feel it relax. And then actively press the head back into the mat a little bit and feel it relax. And that should feel pretty good. You're not changing the angle of your head as you're pressing back. You're just directly pressing back as gently or as hard as feels good, and then release. And then we'll do the same thing with the shoulder blades. I want you to press the shoulder blades back into the mat, even allowing the center of the chest to lift up a little bit. And then I want you to relax them and feel the whole body sort of melt towards the mat. Press the shoulder blades back towards the mat and then relax there and feel the shoulder blades soften into the mat, feel the ribs and the whole chest connect a little more into the mat, not the chest, but the, the mid back, the thorax. And again, press the shoulder blades into the mat. Good. And then relax and really now feel the head, the shoulder blades, the mid back, upper back really you know, melted and soft into the mat hopefully. Take a nice breath in. We're going to move the low back pelvis. So on your out breath, drawing in with the tummy button, back towards the spine a little bit, letting the low back gently flatten down towards the mat, and then right back to our nice neutral as you breathe in. And our goal with this today is to leave the head and neck nice and still. So as you do this movement with the low back and pelvis, do you feel any movement at the head and neck? You know, often if we're tight or we're, you know, like we don't have wonderful mobility in our mid back or part of our spine as we flatten the back, we'll, we'll feel the chin poke up and then when we return, we'll feel the head slide down. <laughs> we're getting this movement. I don't know how to mimic that really, but uh, <laughs> you wanna feel like basically, you know, your, your breastbone upward stays nice and still while the lower part of the spine does this movement. And that's just a focus. It might not be able to happen today, but it's again, it's what you're aiming to, uh, to achieve, right? Let's peel up with the spine. So gently flat with that low back and now squeeze the bum and I want you to peel up with the tailbone the back of the pelvis, one bone of the back at a time, and at the top, how's the head and neck and the shoulders? Could the shoulders be away from the ears a little bit? Yeah. Take a nice breath in there and peel it down, one bone to the back at a time. Do, 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 do. 
right back to neutral. Exhale to peel it up. And peel it back down one bone to the back at a time. And we'll do two more like this. Pausing at the top, if it feels right for a breath in. Peeling back down. Watching that the knees don't get wider at the top than the feet. They stay just as they were. Last one here. If you're brand new to this, maybe just hold this here and look at your form. See if you can get the hips a little higher. Are the ribs down though? You don't want to be uh, putting so much pressure in the neck by lifting the, the ribs really high. And see that the knees are not getting wider. And if you've been doing a few of these videos and you're ready, then have the pelvis stay level. Press through the right, the ball of the right foot, lift the right heel, and the left leg is strong to stabilize and switch. So press strongly into your right leg, lift the left heel, and just alternate at your own pace, but see if you can also stay relaxed in that head and neck, even if it means actively pressing the head back into the mat for a second, so then you can notice that relaxation when you release that, right? Sometimes we don't notice we're tight, but if we tense there on purpose and then let it go, there's a definite change and you can then notice, oh yeah, I was tight. Now I'll try to be a little more relaxed. Let's do two more each uh, heel, right heel and left heel. If this hurts in your spine at all, then try to just hover a little lower at first. And maybe that's, it's still working good muscles, but the spine's not in as high of a position and maybe that's more comfortable. Good. Take a nice breath in, both feet are even on the mat and then peel it down as you breathe out. One bone of the back at a time. Do, 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 Good. And then just bring the knees in towards the chest. One at a time or both together, whatever feels good, but just to get some length in the, in the glutes, the back of the hips where you just worked. The gluteal muscles. Good. Ah. And now for just a nice part of our video. So with your towel. So at first we're going to use the towel and we're just going to put it behind the head. So that's where, that's where you might have to play around with how, how thick your towel is because you'd like to place it behind the neck and, and have it fill most of that space. It doesn't have to be pressing up high into the neck, but when you lay down in your neutral uh, spine, you'd like to sort of be aware of that towel behind the neck, right? And we're going to move the towel, like if you have it right behind the neck and not at all behind the head, you're going to shift it up a little bit. You're going to shift it up to be right at your suboccipital region or right at the base of your skull. So my, the weight of my head is now on the towel and you see how it's given me a little bit of a chin tuck. And I'm really feeling a nice length in the back of my upper neck in that what we call the suboccipital region or the base of the skull, right? So just you'll have to play around there to find that nice position. But if you're tight there, you'll feel a nice length, a nice stretch. It's like someone's giving you a little traction on the, on the neck, right? You'll also be giving yourself a nice sexy double chin, which is good. <laughs> Not really, but uh, <laughs> wiggle your feet right together, your knees right together, and just take a nice breath and, and relax and see if that towel feels good where it is. You know, maybe it's already relaxing a bit and you need to move it, move it up a little bit to get a little more length there. And then we're going to take the shoulder blades and make sure they're on the mat and that chest is nice and open. And we'll turn the palms up and slide the hands out so that they're shoulder width apart. Or shoulder, not shoulder width apart, at shoulder height. So you're in a nice T position with your arms. And so right now I'm feeling a nice length in the back of my neck, especially my upper neck. And now I have a nice little stretch going across the front of the chest. 
Take a nice breath in, and on your out breath, raise both arms off the floor to come and be shoulder width apart, and then breathe in and lower them back down, but try to make them wider. Try to get the fingertips further away from you and wider across the chest. Exhale to do it again. And nice and wide as you go back down. And leave the arms on the mat for this one now, or on the floor beside you. And if you're tight for space, you could always bend the elbows. It's a bit of a different stretch, but to be in this cactus position. If you have room, go for the big T. All right, still feel good in your neck, still feel good in the front of the chest. Take a breath in and let your knees drift to your right side. So keep the knees pressed together. That left foot can even lift off the mat a little bit, but the knees are staying together and the legs just go as far to that right side as you can still stay very rooted through the mat with your left shoulder blade and with that nice length in the back of the neck. Breathe in there. See if it feels right to go a little bit further. On your next out breath, peel it back to the center. Feel like you get the rib cage to the center first, then the waist, then the pelvis, then the knees, and then you go to the other side. Keep those knees pressed together so the right sole of my foot has come off the mat. That's okay. You'd like to keep the knees together so that you feel this more in your spine and the mobility in the lower part of the spine helping the neck, upper back, helping to take some of the strain in our daily movements. Keep the right shoulder blade rooted to the mat. Breathe in. Peel it back to the center. Let's do one more nice one to each side. If you need to adjust your towel, if you're releasing a little bit in the back of the neck and you need to, you know, get yourself more into a bit of that length traction feeling, or if you need to reach the fingertips out to the sides a little more to feel more stretch across the chest, go ahead, because this is sort of multiple, uh, multiple lengthenings. <laughs> it's not even a word, I don't think. Exhale back to the center. And then last one, knees going to the left, right shoulder blade on the mat, Nice length in the head and back of the neck. Peel it back to the center. Good, and then with your towel, you're gonna take it out from under the head now. And unroll it. And maybe fold it up a couple times lengthwise. Cause you're gonna create a little cradle for your head. So it can be, you know, not too skinny, but not too wide. Maybe it comes up. And you're going to take the, take the towel and you're going to put it back almost in that same spot or maybe slightly higher. So you definitely don't want the towel behind uh, your neck itself because we're going to lift the towel towards the ceiling. And if it's right at the neck only and not the head, you're going to like, <laughs> that's not going to feel good. <laughs> the chin's going to lift and you're going to say, I wonder what she's doing here. Um, so take it and it's more the head that you want to support, not so that you're way up at the top pulling the head and chin to the chest, but that you're lifting the head directly to the ceiling. Okay? So you'll have to get, again, a little bit accustomed and you know, this is not our usual movements, but uh, it feels good, I promise, once you get it in the right spot. Uh, bring the elbows in a little bit narrower, then, you know, not right out to the side. Take a nice breath in, and then start to draw on the towel with the hands and the arms towards the ceiling, and just, just so the weight of your head gets supported by that towel, right? Not so that anyone looking at you from far away would know that you're lifting, you know, it's just the weight coming off, and it doesn't even have to be the whole weight. It's just so it feels good. And maybe that feels good just there, and you stay. If you can, you're going to add in a little rotation. So you're going to lift the left side of your towel a little higher and turn the head to the right of it. And then same thing other way. Right side of the towel lifts a little higher towards the ceiling. And the head is as relaxed into the towel as you can be. It's not that you're turning your head. You're trying to let the towel turn it. 
And you really need the weight of the head to be in the towel, otherwise you're using your own neck muscles and you might as well just do your own neck rotation without the towel. If the arms get tired, you can take a little break or not do as many repetitions. This is really nice if you have someone else you trust to do this. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know how you give them a, a qualifying uh, test without actually doing it, and then you just hope they don't do it too hard. They hope they understand what you're doing, what they're supposed to be doing. But um, it can be it can be really really nice anyway. So just uh, play around with it. It's a nice movement to get a little bit of rotation through. Maybe joints of the spine that don't don't do that on their own, right? Because you're not using your muscles so much. This is sort of passive, we call it, rotation of the spine. Release it down. If the arms are tired, just place them down at your sides. And then you can straighten out the legs nice and long if that feels good. Hmm. Turn the palms all the way up. And just take a couple nice breaths like this. And this will be our end position. Hope you enjoyed that. A bit of a different class with that focus on the upper, upper body, upper back, neck, and shoulders. But hopefully it feels really nice right now. We also have a video here called, I think, the neck release. So if, you, if you're looking to treat that area, then maybe try that one. It's a nice gentle level as well. Um, you, can, you can linger in that pose as long as you want, but I'll sign off and thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.